like to call this meeting to order. Let's go around and identify ourselves for the record. We'll start with you, Dennis. Dennis Wheeler, Michigan Attorney. Patrick Flynn. Amy Dabowski. Elvie Bridges. Dick Training. Pete Peterson. Tim Steele. Paul Wolf. Bill Starr. Rudy Hall. Peter Rogers. Internal Audit. Mike Chavik. Internal Audit. Okay. Dennis, we're going to start with you first, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then we're going to go to Ed Jarvis, and we'll go to Mike Gaddy. Go ahead, Dennis. Mr. Chairman, Assembly members, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the AO that we've proposed. Um, just a brief background. Some of you are going to be familiar with this background. Have you been involved in the audit process or just as uh, Assembly members uh, with some of the issues here? Um, my involvement with this uh, medical trust program began roughly in 2010 um, and again in 11 and then again as these audits came out in 2012 and 2014. Both our work, which is summarized in this memorandum I just added out to you in terms of municipal attorney opinions over the last 10 years or so, as well as the uh, internal audits all point to various different concerns involving the medical trust program. Primarily, those concerns boil down to what I would call a disconnect between uh, how we view the staff support that works for the trust program and how the trust board need, needs to operate with that person as their administrator. Um, essentially, you have a situation where you have somebody who is or is not a municipal employee. And there's been some tension, some push and pull on that issue as to whether or not they need to comply with our personnel rules, with our ethical rules, and so on, or whether they are 100% totally under the control and supervision of the trust board. My concern has been, since I've been working on this, is that we have a certain level of exposure when we do not have control over the day-to-day -day functions and the supervision of a municipal employee, and yet they're on our books, so to speak, and we're responsible for them at some level yet to be litigated. So from my perspective, what I want to do is limit re or reduce the municipality's exposure or conversely take more control. And as I expressed to the retirement board yesterday, for the municipality to take more control is just not functionally in my mind a good way to go, right? Um, you have a trust board that needs to run that program and, and they should do so. And so the preference would be for that person to be 100% completely under auspices of that particular so to do that, I proposed this ordinance. And at the time I was putting this together, it, it seemed to me that another thing that we should consider is looking at combining the two boards so the single board has governance functions over both the retirement system and the medical trust program. Uh, my understanding is that that's a common model. It's not unheard of to do it that way. It provides opportunities for one-stop shopping for the members. It may provide some administrative uh, efficiencies. It may produce cost savings for full system. <coughs> That's sort of the high-level background as to how this came together. Um, when the ordinance went forward, we received a response letter from the Retirement Board Council, Mr. Posner, dated January 28th. I don't know that you guys have copies of this letter at this time, but he raised a number of issues and as I said yesterday at the retirement board, I think all of the issues can be worked out. I don't, have, I don't have any objections to any of them. Perhaps the one that we may need to do a little bit of work on from my perspective is right now the internal auditor audits the medical trust, but does not audit the retirement system. We're transferring the medical trust administration to be under a single board. That needs to be resolved. Because we're proposing to continue to provide funding, I think there still needs to be an internal audit function that's attached to that funding. So what I propose that internal auditor would still audit the trust side of the house, if you will, but would, there's no intention here to expand their internal audit functions to cover the retirement system. And in response to questions more generally about what is the intent behind this, is there any sort of hidden program or intent to be, become more involved from the municipality's perspective in the retirement system, the answer to that is no. With that, I would like to step through the ordinance unless there's some questions about background. That we Paul, do you have questions relative to this? You want to wait till he's finished? Well, I, I think as you present this, it might be helpful to have a question, at least in mind, and then if we need to circle back and come back and find that. First of all, how long has this trust and this board been in place? I think it's important to know. 
Um, the originating ordinances um, were the see, mid 90s, I believe. 94, so I'm saying, and I don't have any reason to disagree with that. Pete, can you answer the question? Okay. Okay, so go ahead, Dennis. If you, yeah, we'll come back to that. Yeah, I Second one is, uh, how often has this concern that you just explained, uh, how's, how long has this concern been, I guess, a concern? Has it, has it been viewed as a concern if it's been in place since the mid-90s? The, I, know uh, you said, I know you said initially 2010 is when you came to the Yeah, the, the first opinion that I'm aware of, because there may have been some informal advice and consultations, but the first written opinion was in 2004. Um, we did two in 2010, and I addressed those in this memo and then I handed it out to you. Right. Um, I know it, it became particularly contentious, I think, in 2009 when Mayor Klain was looking through furloughs, and there was some dispute about whether this position should be or should not be subject to the furloughs. And of course, then the audits, each time the audit came up, there were issues about the administration of the program. Um, the internal auditor issued the report, management issued their responses. In the last two, specifically 2010 and 2014, we've indicated there should be some kind of fix. And so um, if something the internal auditor suggested, we concurred with that, we developed the ordinance in response to it. And then I guess lastly, and then, uh, the funding of the position for the administrator is by the municipality, but is it the same for the funding for the position on the police and fire retirement system? Is it borne by the municipality? Um, what, let me, let me follow the code so I can cite the, the code for the administrative position for the retirement board. Um, Paul, to answer your first question is one January 1995. Mr. Chair, this is Attorney Michael Gandy. I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but I can't hear that well, so could I ask people to please speak into the microphones? We're going to see, Mike, we're going to see if we can help you by moving the phone. Okay, thank you. Okay, so... Quoting from the code that applies to the retirement system, the retirement board determines the compensation of the retirement board executive director. Uh, they're, they're maxed out at the rate P24. The board enters into an agreement with the municipality to provide for full payroll and employee benefit services for the director and the staff with the full cost to be paid from system assets. And, and then just to follow Anything else up, I've got to go to Bill Starr, he's been patient. Right. And then I guess the last part is, is that, was that as a result of, uh, was that a municipal, I mean, was that the position of the municipality? Was it forced to do something or was this a result of some litigation? I mean, I, I'm trying to figure out how we got here because if we're, if we're doing this since 1995, why are we now, 20 years later, looking at it as a liability or concern? If it was something that was established by the municipality there, sure. was it a concern then? Uh, in the AM, well, could that, this question I just answered was for the retirement system directors. That was their first part of the question. But shifting back to what you're just asking now about the retirement for the medical trust, when the medical trust was set up, we, the municipality agreed to fund a part time position to help the program kick off. We even provided some seed money to help the program kick off. At that time, it was not anticipated that there would be a full-time trust administrator as a municipal employee um, doing the work they're doing now and paid the way they're paid now. In fact, the, the cost numbers were really, really small. Um, I believe I might even quote it in this number in this memo. Um, yeah. So the two-year interim financing plan, this is paragraph two in the back of page two. There was fourteen thousand for a technical position in ninety-five and only nine thousand in ninety-six. And it says, you see the quote there from the AM. Assumed to be hired in January 1 of 95, part time at age 14, step A, 20% in 95, 30% into 97, and $5,000 for one time equipment costs. And then in, 20, uh, in 2001, in paragraph 3, you see it started to expand and grow. And now it's grown to what it is, where it's uh, salary and benefits of something in the range of 108000 and it's uh, a much larger, if you will, administrative position. Bill Starr, sir. Two questions, and it's okay to ask Mr. Rask some on that. I Go didn't ahead. bring the audit today necessarily, but the premise um, 
two questions for you is how many times have you made the recommendation uh, that's similar to, to the assembly action in front of us? That would be one question. And then if you could elaborate on what were the premise of, of that decision or that recommendation, what's the premise in doing it? Okay, I'm going to expand your, my answer to your question. First of all, we do two audits currently with the medical trust. The first one, which we've done for years, is the five-year review that's required by the assembly. The assembly has delegated that responsibility to my office. So every five years, we do an audit of the trust itself. And when we started doing those audits, we pointed out the assembly, which for your behalf was at that time, the, the contribution was was falling further behind the actual medical cost for the, for the participants. Mm -hmm. So over those audits, the assembly has raised that contribution rate. And I think the last thing that happened was, was uh, Sun Teshi uh, revised the ordinance that gave the, the participants a discount on the medical program, mm -hmm. which now is funded by the police and fire department budgets. Okay. Back in, uh, in when Mayor Clayman did the furlough, there was some problems that came up. And uh, when, when Mayor Sullivan came in, the yard director looked at, to look at her budget and found that there were expenditures coming out of their budget that she wasn't aware of, purchases by the medical trust. Her, the, all kind of purchases. They're all legitimate. I mean, they were not in Elizabeth. But she felt there was no controls as to how the administrator was spending her budget. So the code was revised to require my office to do an every two year audit of the administration side of it. So we issued two reports now from that time. And both times we found that there's a lack of clarity as to who actually that range 15 administrator works for. And one example was the furlough. Mayor Clayman, when he put brought in the furlough, said this would be an equitable, across the board, non-represented furlough. The medical trust board said no. He's our employee. He's not going to take the furlough. This, so there's, there's lack of clarity. If you look at the organization chart, you find his position everywhere. His, pay, his time card is approved by an employee over at the Fire Prevention Center across town who's on the board. One place in the work chart of the municipality shows that he's positioned under the mayor. And another time it shows it in the CFO. So we are putting this thing out. You need to find out where does this position fit as a municipal employee? And like Mr. Attorney pointed out, there is a potential for some problems when you have an municipal employee that's supposed to follow personnel rules. And I can certainly, we can, as we debate, we can certainly weigh and put on, on that. So I, I appreciate those answers. I have one more question. Is there anything inherently that prohibits the municipality policy from charging the full cost to the, to the trust? To the chair, Mr. Because your, your earlier example in the code referenced the assets becoming the power basis for the money generated, but inherently is there anything that, that either legally or besides some administrative uh, policy generated by legislation? From my perspective, no, but I think the medical trust might take a different position. Uh, obviously, the retirement system and the trust uh, have in their history some litigation. And part of that litigation resolved in a scenario where we agreed to help get the thing started mm -hmm. on the technical position, right? So can we completely di divorce ourselves from providing any funding? I think the trust may take issue with that. From my perspective, I think we can do it, but um, it, it may be something that would invite litigation. Our proposal is not to do that. Our proposal is to provide funding. But that position, if that's what the, the new board wants to do with it, can, be funded by that, but they would not be a Mr. Employee. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Bowski. Mr. Chair, are we going to have an opportunity to hear from the board? Absolutely. Anything? Okay, I'll hold on my. I will let Dennis finish his, and then we're going to go to Mr. Jarvis and Mr. Gaddy. I'll hold on my comments. Okay.
You want to finish yours? I, I'm I sorry, Mr. Chairman. This is something that I uh, did not uh, think to draw out with the return of board yesterday. But if you would turn to page four of the ordinance, right in the middle of the page, at about lines uh, 21 through 28, you see the edits that I've proposed there. So if you read the capitalized portion, which I'm proposing to change, but that capitalized portion is current code. What it reads, in essence, is that the Board of Trustees may request that the, re this is for the medical trust, the Board of Trustees of the medical trust may request that the retirement board, which is the police and fire retirement system, amend um, its trustee and investment management contracts to provide services to both the retirement medical funding program and the police and fire retirement system. So current code already captures some of the essence of what I'm talking about, where the boards can cooperate together, one can provide services to the other in terms of shared contracts with individuals who provide services to them. I've, I've modified it here a little bit to take into account that there might only be a single board. But um, again, as I said earlier, the, the model is not uncommon. In fact, our own code, at least to some degree, currently anticipates the ability to, to share resources. Chairman, that's, that's what I have sure. to say. Thank you. Mr. Jarvis, sir? Yes, sir. Um, like come on up. <laughs> Do you identify your position? Yes, I'm director of the Anchorage Police and Fire Retirement System. I've also made copies of our attorney, Mr. Bob Foster, that Mr. Wheeler referenced, and so they're here if you'd like to disseminate those. <coughs> Could I clarify his position again? Go ahead, sir. You, you Would you clarify? yourself as the director. Yes. Who do you work for specifically? Are you a city employee or not? Or is that what we're discussing? I am considered a municipal employee, fully funded by the retirement trust. So am I, um, you mentioned personnel rules. Uh, I, I am, but go ahead. But yeah, you, you mentioned it before. Yes, I have to follow the personnel. I don't remember saying that, but that's okay. I appreciate it. Someone that. had a question on that, but he has yeah. a director. So I think the emphasis was on the ethics code as well. Too. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so, so I signed something when I was initially hired that, uh, yes, I will obey the personnel rules. Yeah, you used the title director, and I wasn't familiar with that. So thank yes. you. Yes. Okay, you're welcome. Mr. Chairman, just to make sure we're doing the same thing. He's the chief, he's the director for the retirement system. I'm, I'm, he's not the, his position is not the focus of the ordinance. I, I know. Okay. 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 I just am I'm not sure where, why he's addressing us then, but it's okay. okay. Well, well, thank Happy you. Happy you are. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. So, um, and also joining me today is um, our, our chair, Mr. Paul uh, Burns, and also our vice chair, Mr. Everett Robbins. And there's also two other board members in the audience today, Mr. Um, Jim Bowman, who's retired to fire, and also uh, um, um, Mr. Moore, um, our treasurer as well, serves on the board. We thank you for this invitation to, to speak and be heard regarding AO 2014-151. Um, the Anchorage Police and Fire Retirement Board, along <coughs> with his pension attorney and a Mr. Klausner, uh, met yesterday and heard from Mr. Wheeler and also um, Mrs. Uh, Nancy Barry Usera, um, the Director of Employee Relations. They provided a brief history on the, the medical trust and the drafting of this ordinance. Also in attendance was Mr. Raskums, and uh, the board uh, asked many questions and um, the general public was given an opportunity to speak and ask questions. After the break, the board uh, moved to go into an executive session to discuss the legal matter. Uh, there were no votes or actions uh, taken in the executive session. The board voted unanimously in a 9-0 to zero vote against the current form of AO 2014-151 for legal and fiduciary concerns. The board then voted on a motion to direct staff to meet with the MOA to determine if a legal, if these legal and fiduciary concerns could be resolved um, and information submitted later to the board for further discussion. It was voted down in a narrow vote five to four. 
The reason why the board voted against this motion is because they did not believe that the retirement system should be expending our members' money to create uh, to, to uh, create this merger. So the board, board then voted unanimously in the nine to zero oh, nine to zero vote to authorize a limited amount of time for our pension attorney, Mr. Bob Klosner, to talk with the municipal attorney regarding this issue, but must be coordinated through me, the director of the Anchorage Police and Fire. This concept of the retirement board managing the medical trust has merits and is commonly performed by other retirement systems across the country. Although merging and commingling two separate trusts that have been in existence for a long period of time is not the common practice when they've been operating for that for over 20 years. The board is not opposed to revisiting an S version that addresses the identification clause, a longer transitional period, and other concerns we had at the meeting. We thank the MOA for having the confidence and trust in the Retirement Board and its staff. The retirement system is dedicated to serving those who serve us, the police and fire that dedicate to put their lives on the line every day. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Bowski, do you want to ask him a question? Wait to Mr. Gaddy's dealt with his testimony. Uh, I can ask one. I think I know the answer to it. But our, um, all your members of the retirement system also members of the medical trust? No. Thank you. Other questions from assembly members? Th this Thank legal you. paper, is this your lawyer? It is. Perhaps you can clarify number two, uh, the statement that specifically the second line, subjecting the system to an internal municipal audit would be deemed, uh, I'm not certain I know that big word there. Uh, diminish. So, so benefits cannot be diminished at, at yes. all, or, or likewise. So, so what is happening in our structure of the retirement system is we do have an internal, well, we do have an audit every year. Mm -hmm. That audit is presented to, to the administration, uh, the mayor's office, and the municipal manager, as well as the assembly every year. So, um, but the current structure of the medical trust is that that audit is internal. Mm -hmm. And our view is that it should be external, but those results can be given to the assembly and administration as it's currently. You're done. talking about the peer financial numbers in particular? Financial numbers are any, um, any issues that they may see um, as well as far as how we do business. You're aware Mr. Raskin's group does one by ordinance requirement for the health trust? Yes, I do. Look okay. at that. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other questions from assembly members? Steel, Who sir. does that audit? KPMG. Any other questions? Mr. Flynn, sir. You may not be the right person to answer this, but I've been struggling with the second sentence of the second paragraph. How um, an internal audit is somehow a diminishment of the uh, system's independence is That's right. tough for me to understand. Okay. Well, currently through settlement, there was a 2000 settlement, uh, the structure of the retirement board, um, that was one of the, 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 the issues there, that by being independent, we should have an independent audit. We actually pay for that audit. And uh, it is independent as well. So if there's any uh, concerns to be raised, they're going to raise those uh, as well. So, so this audit is presented to you. But as far as independence, we would like the ability to hire whomever to audit that. So it could be a KPFG today, but it could be another firm as well. I understand that. But if you have parallel audits, one hired an external right. firm like KPMG or right. the, 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 whoever's left in the what used to be the big eight, I think it's big four now. Yeah, <laughs> that keeps or something. That keeps changing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then Mr. Raskin's organization produces a parallel audit. How, how is that somehow a diminishment of, of the system of dependence? Well, that would be that uh, the municipality is coming into what we would view as our space and um, actually performing an audit on that. 
so so it is a uh, I'm not. You're, you're stretching for me, but okay. Okay, so, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll I'm stop. not an ERISA attorney and I'm not a pension attorney, but there is a diminishment. So. I, okay, uh, I, I hear your point. I'm not sure I agree with it. That's okay. Yeah. Mr. Wheeler, sir. Just a uh, vigorous turn just to follow up on that. I, I, I agree with Mr. Flint. I don't see it. But I want to point out that this proposal does not include an internal audit function of the retirement system. All it does is maintain the current internal audit function on the trust itself. So it does not, we're not proposing, we do not intend to propose, or even suggest that the internal audit should have any kind of audit function over the retirement system at all. Yes, sir. To that point, then, thank you, Mr. Chairman. To that point, Mr. Wheeler, if, as this ordinance is laying it out, if the trust and its assets were to be managed by the retirement system, would that not be basically that camel's nose under the tent, so to speak, into the retirement system's board operation and telling them how to administer and telling them how they should and shouldn't do? To the chair, Mr. Honan, the board essentially wears two hats under this model. So the internal audit would look at the trust program, not the retirement system program, and could identify problems with the trust program, and sure, it would, it would report to the board, that board that there may be some issues. But the recommendations only. It's like nothing the to do with the function of the retirement system or what it suggests that they need to change their monitors how they manage the retirement system. We would only point out issues with the trust program as they currently are. So, so to follow up briefly, I'm glad you said that because the audits that have been completed to this point by Mr. Raskins of the trust are recommendations only, correct? That's correct. Mr. Starr, sir. Not specific to your retirement program but medical trust I'm ignorant a little bit on it is there continuing enrollment in that or is it a decreasing number of folks as they uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Weider? I believe they're all closed systems so there are no new men. There's no new people so getting trust in. So the trust is, is uh, and this is maybe a question later is, is X number of members and going down and is what? Yes sir. Okay. This is one of our bad ideas many years no, uh, it's too for debate by a previous legislator, but the idea that it's not a, a growing number is what I, what I needed the information on. Mr. Ranscom. I'd like to kind of clarify this, this audit issue. What KPMG does for the retirement board is a financial audit. Just like we have BDO, we do a financial audit of the municipality. We don't do financial audits in the internal audit. We're not CPAs. So it's, we would, we would never attempt to do a financial audit of either system. Like I pointed out, the first part we do is in your behalf to look at the, the trust and see how the funding structure is working. You could do that yourselves if you wanted to. That's not in my, in my code. The second audit was put in the code was strictly for the administration of expenses and acts. Again, not a financial audit. It's a very limited scope of the medical trust. And uh, that can be taken out as easily as it was put in there a couple of years ago. Okay, is that all, sir? Mm -hmm. Any other questions from assembly members? Who is Mr. Gaddy? Okay, Mr. Gaddy, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear, but not that well. Uh, I'm sorry to report um, the connection or the phone positioning um, is not conducive to. Uh, getting a full uh, 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 set of information from the individual speaking. Um, so I, I, uh, I just wanted to, to, to state that. But uh, otherwise, can you hear me, Mr. Chair? We can hear you fine, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. It's the same uh, old equipment when you were here, we're using today. <laughs> well, it's probably pretty old then. Um, the um, uh, my name is Michael Gaddy. I'm a partner with the law firm of uh, Walter, Brecht, and Cartledge, and we've been asked by the Medical Trust to help them navigate through this issue um, uh, to address some of the concerns that have been raised and also to provide an alternative to the municipality's ordinance with respect to the trust. And uh, there is a proposed alternative that the trust board will be taking up in the near term um, for the assembly to consider. 
Um, so I, I believe that's been presented uh, uh, today, although there's no action to be taken on that. It's really more informational. But um, we, we think that uh, uh, 151 proposed by the municipality is, Mike, is not the most... Mike, can I ask you who that was presented, who was the ex person presented to, your board or who? Because we don't have a document in front of us. the Medical Trust Board this weekend, I believe. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. You're welcome, Mr. Training. Um, uh, anyway, I think that uh, 151 perhaps requires a lot more consideration than it's been given. And the reason for that is, and Mr. Brecht is in the audience, and he'll be speaking on some uh, trust law issues vis-a-vis -vis the uh, medical trust agreement with the municipality. But um, uh, there, there's more here than just an ordinance being passed and all of a sudden the medical trust changes substantially. Uh, because first of all, uh, the purpose of the retiree trust uh, is different than the medical trust. They are different purposes, they have somewhat different beneficiaries, and even though Mr. Klausner has indicated that the two trusts could be managed by one board, there is a serious concern about potential conflicts and fiduciary duties, due diligence, loyalty, and uh, uh, making sure the assets of each of those trusts are segregated as well as the allocation of those assets to various expenses. Um, furthermore, um, there's a, a, a very important question about who gets to amend the, board, the, the trust. If you look to the ordinance and if you look to the trust agreement, and there really, uh, to my knowledge, there really has not been much discussion about the trust agreement and its interface with the entire program, but the medical trust agreement gives the board substantial authority that emanates from trust law under Title 13 of Alaska statutes. And so as a consequence of that, I'm not quite so sure that the municipality could just unilaterally change the trust and um, have an entirely different program from that which was earlier contemplated and in place, and which, I might add, has been working very well for the last 20 years. I know some people have raised some bumps in the road we would respectfully submit those bumps are really uh, little tiny speed bumps that are very easily remedied by the uh, proposal that the uh, draft proposal that will be submitted to the board, the medical trust board, to be taken up uh, to uh, uh, address some of the concerns raised by the municipalities. Um, uh, so the other more serious legal questions come up and uh, I have a great respect for Mr. Wheeler and Mr. Klausner. Um, uh, you know, they do a great job for the municipality, but there's been a number of legal cases associated with the constitutional provision about the diminution or impairment of retiree benefits. And when you look at those cases and read them very carefully, there's um, uh, there, there needs to be some corresponding benefit given if there's a diminution in an asset. And there's a question as to whether or not the, tr the medical trust, not having their own plan administrator, uh, director, employee, whatever you may want to call that individual, to assist them could be a diminution of benefits because uh, uh, when you read those cases, uh, they talk about um, uh, the surplus assets, what happens with those surplus assets of the trust, if any. I don't know if there's been any discussion about that. I don't know if there's been any financial analysis about how all of this would work, and um, and those could potentially result in diminution of assets depending on how they're constructed. Also, um, uh, there might be an increase in plan obligations or a decline in, in investment revenues or uh, uh, shortfalls in providing for the trust. If those two could be diminution or impairment of benefits for those public safety retirees, who I might add, and I want to throw a pitch in for, for the men and women who have dedicated their lives to the protection of the municipality and done an excellent job of doing that. And now they're in their retiree years and they're expecting to have at least a part of their medical costs paid for as, as a sacrifice. 
So anyway, um, uh, there, there's a real serious question about diminution of, of, uh, of assets. And when you look at these, you have to look at um, uh, the entire program. And I don't think that's been done, because I don't think that it's really clear how it, this new program would work. So uh, our position is at the Medical Trust that we think the system works well the way it is. Maybe there's a couple of um, uh, technical adjustments that need to be but to throw the baby out with the bathwater to coin a, an off-use and probably overused phrase is not appropriate in this case, and we would respectfully request the Assembly to reject 151 and uh, to consider uh, the alternative that uh, has been pro proposed or will be proposed by the uh, Medical Trust Board. So I'm happy to address any questions. I know Mr. Breck has a few brief comments about Alaska Trust Law vis-a-vis -vis the Medical Trust Agreement with the uh, municipality. Mr. Chair and, uh, and members, thank you very much. Mike, when would your S version be available for the Assembly members? How long does your board need to take to consider it? I, uh, Mr. Chair, I think they'll be taking it up this weekend and it would be available to them as a draft at any time um, that you would like to have it. We'd be happy to provide that to you. I'd like it as fast as your board yes, deals with it. it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. We'll make that happen. Mike, the other thing is there's case law out there in Alaska, uh, Supreme Court decisions, relative to the diminishing of retirement benefits. Do you have a, you made, you cited some of that. Do you have cases on that? You can send me an email on it. It's been years since I yeah. looked it up. But if I remember Alaska yeah. case law, they're very explicit. Supreme Court rulings, you cannot reduce benefits once the benefits are granted upon retirement. Yes, there are some nuances, Mr. Chair, uh, as uh, uh, involved in those cases, but uh, we'd be happy to provide the cases uh, to you. We can provide them to Mr. Wheeler to give to you or provide them directly, whichever would be most appropriate. If you'd send it to Wheeler, he can send it to us or the clerk. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Question, questions from the Sunday you. members. Do so members have any questions? Uh, yeah. Mr. Horman. Mr. Caddy, thanks for your uh, being willing to be on the phone with us. And I hope you hope you can hear me well. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Um, so is it is it your position through your review uh, that we should look at 2014-151 as, in essence, not salvageable in its in its written form entirely, and then look at creating a new ordinance that might adjust uh, or amend areas or issues of concern, or should we take 2014-151 and try to amend that? Uh, Mr. Chair? Mike, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I think 151 should be rejected, and uh, the, a new ordinance should be presented. We have a draft. And I apologize, it's not before you right now. We'll get it to you as soon as possible. We have a draft for you to consider. Mike, it's in front of us now. Okay, it was, okay great. It was given to us. Okay, and then um, when, when would you be available to, uh, so we could perhaps create a committee or something, would that, would that be an advisable uh, thing to do? I, what I don't want to do, I'll save my comments for later. Never mind. Scratch it. Mr. Starr, sir. In your review by law, 387.030 appears to have um, legislative conflict in it, is the best word I can use. The, the initial heading of 387.030, as it's written right now, talks about um, all the amounts held by the trust are to be used to administer and fulfill the obligations arising under the funding program. That's the, uh, that's the header under 3830. Did you look at why and when perhaps the clause farther into the ordinance uh, or the law in the books talks about the requirement then to fund a professional administrative generalist? Um, when did that occur and, and was it there from the very beginning or was it added? Uh, 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 Mr. Chair? Go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Starr, uh, we have to do a little bit of uh, uh, research to go back to that. I think that maybe the trust, uh, uh, one of the trust board members could give you some of the history. There is a 20-year history associated with this trust. 
um, and uh, uh, they could speak more uh, authoritatively about that history and the legislative history of when that changed. The fact of the matter is, though, I'll, I'll say this respectfully, um, when it occurred uh, probably is not that relevant if we're looking prospectively to address some of these issues and allow the board to have an administrative professional, whatever characterization you might want to. True. I'm looking for in. intent when the trust was established and when the ordinance was written. So thank you for the answer. I'm just looking for when, when the early uh, trust was it was put out. There seems to be a legal summary that some of the funds were tendered to sort of get the trust up and running, uh, the medical trust in particular, uh, on funding levels initially. So my historical perspective is when it was originally formed, what was the initial intent? Uh, subsequently, it's probably been modified. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Starr. Mr. Wheeler, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Starr, if you have in front of you my memo, to page your, yeah. back at page two, paragraphs three and four, you see that there's changes made by ordinance in 2001 that talk about the scale and type of the position. So in my question, specifically uh, under Section C of the current code, uh, 87030ABC, uh, uh, and now I guess it's D, kind of unsure. It's four, line 42 on page 5. Yeah. So the area where it says the funded professional administrative generalist, do you know when that was added? Yes, 2001. Even though there was the original language on 030 on the very top under the heading prior to A, that was the original language then, do you think? That would make sense? Yeah. On, um, on page uh, 3, line 19. Page, page 3, line 18 or 19? Of oh, the ordinance. Line 19. Page 3 of 6, line 19, basically quotes code. Yeah. And that, that was the original line, did you think? Your page number is different than mine. So I'm sorry. Your line number is different. Basically, it's a summary of uh, 87.030 as we're under law now. Yeah. The, the ordinance resummarizes 030. Yeah. And then this language here. Right. That was original? Yeah. Can I expand just a little bit on that? Go ahead, sir. The, the, the legislative quandary that I read right now in those two verbiages, this one here where it says, all the amounts held by the trust are used to administer and fulfill the obligations arising under the retirement funding program. That language exists from the beginning. And then we see down in, and I guess I'm referring to C or D, I don't know how it is under code now, but then it was added to fund a professional administrative generalist. So in that, Quandary, is there a precedence that we need to acknowledge? In the original establishment of the program, the municipality agreed to help start the program, including providing a part time technician to get this thing going. Okay. For whatever reason, in 2001, the position was changed and enhanced, and then even further to where we are today. Without defining the way it should have, what that position was, or actually who that position was responsible to, the municipality or to the trust mm -hmm. board for all purposes. I'm more so interested that, in the funding. That's, that's our, that's our, that's our point right now. Right. Um, our proposal is not intended in any way to diminish or impair benefits. In fact, you're talking about silos. You have a trust program at silos, mm -hmm. you have a retirement system at silos. The only thing they share in common is a board. So I understand Mr. Gaddy's concerns, but those concerns are not based on what we're proposing in the ordinance. And to the extent that we need to tweak the ordinance to make that clear, we are more than happy to do so. That's all I have. Thank you. Other questions from assembly members? Mr. Burke, do you want to talk to us? Mr. Gaddy said you were... Uh, I can make a few comments about uh, the trust instrument. If you would, could you give us your name for the record? Could you give us your name for the record, sir? Uh, my name is uh, Julius Brecht. Uh, okay. I'm a, a, a 
shareholder in the law firm of Wolf or Brick in Carthage. Okay. <coughs> also related to the lawyer that just spoke to us? Uh, yes, uh, Michael Gaddy is uh, also part of that firm. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the Assembly, uh, we've, we've talked about ordinances here, uh, but uh, uh, and they're they're important in the, in the flow of, of, uh, of the legal process uh, and precedent. Um, but there is there is also an instrument here, the, the trust instrument or the trust agreement, that uh, is very important in this context uh, what we're uh, addressing today. The trust instrument that uh, basically sets forth the uh, the uh, medical trust. Uh, it, it, its origins are in the ordinance, uh, 3.87, uh, I believe, uh, and, and uh, uh, so, so that, that's the origin. But once it's been formed, it has an existence, it has a, uh, authority that you have to look to. And uh, once you start something, uh, such as a trust, uh, you can't necessarily stop it immediately, you meaning the, the uh, municipality or or the uh, the uh, assembly uh, without going through the process that is set out in the trust instrument or in the, in the ordinance. In other words, a process for termination. There, it is addressed in the, uh, in the trust, trust instrument. The trust instrument um, was uh, entered into on uh, November third, nineteen ninety-five. I have a copy here. I'm not sure if you have copies of it. Uh, uh, it goes through a series of whereases, uh, one of them of which is uh, it, it establishes uh, the, uh, defines the program for capital P as being the retiree medical trust family uh, uh, funding uh, 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 program for uh, police officers and uh, firefighters. So the, um, the, the named fiduciaries of the, uh, of the trust are the uh, board of trustees, and the fund trustee, uh, which is separately defined, and the investment managers that may be uh, retained by the, by the trust. That's very important because of the, uh, the responsibility is it's not the municipality, not the, the assembly. It is this uh, separate uh, board of trustees that has that fiduciary responsibility. Uh, the powers and duties of the uh, board of trustees are, are numerous. They're set out, and it gives like uh, A through uh, double letters uh, in, in, in the trust instrument, uh, and they go to the, the things that you would might ex normally expect with, with an organization to uh, to uh, to meet, to have a forum, to uh, to deliberate, and, and so forth. And the, the uh, another important part, aspect of the trust instrument is that it sets out the uh, investment criteria or investment uh, policies. Um, that is the the uh, the trust. Uh, the Board of Trustees, even though it has a lot of authority and power, uh, must still follow uh, the guidelines that set out in the trust instrument for um, the, the, the nature of the investments that they, they would make. There is a separate provision in the uh, in the instrument for um, for amendment of the trust instrument, which says the municipality, right there in clear uh, form in section uh, uh, 9.1, that the municipality of Anchorage's assembly uh, may uh, um, amend the uh, uh, the uh, trust instrument uh, with certain limited exceptions um, uh, dealing with the tax law and uh, dealing with the termination of the, of the trust instrument. That's another aspect of the trust that you have to be very uh, uh, careful of as to what you do here, uh, in, in that it is a creature of the uh, of the uh, U.S. Uh, tax code. Uh, the, the purpose of formation of the medical trust was to in, enjoy, uh, in part, to enjoy the, the uh, advantages of such a uh, organization under the Internal Revenue uh, Code of uh, 1986, as amended. So that has that, uh, that needs to be uh, kept in mind as uh, as we deliberate on these matters. Uh, termination of the trust is also provided in 9.2 of the trust instrument. Uh, it says that the uh, trust instrument may be terminated uh, in um, uh, con conformance with uh, section 3.87 um, of, uh, of the ordinances um, and the termination uh, after can be accomplished after payment of all member 
uh, members have been made and payment of administrative expenses. And so, so as you read, it would have to extinguish the amount of people we had in the trust before you could terminate the trust? Pardon? The amount of people in the trust, according to you, would have to go to zero to before it could be, the trust could be done away with? Uh, that, I, don't, I don't believe that that. Okay. That I thought you were saying it had to be, there had to be nobody left in it. That, that could certainly be one of the, the um, reasons for termination, but I, I don't believe that the okay. trust instrument. Well, I've got some members who want to ask you a question, sir. Mr. Starr, sir, first. How many members are in the trust? I'm not aware of the demographics. Uh, Mr. Gaddy or Mr. About 375. I just took a little bit of a step back and pause in your inference that somehow or another we were inferring doing away with the trust. Mm -hmm. And I have no intention. That's not what this ordinance does at all. So I would prefer that, that you not reference the fact that we're trying to terminate the trust or have ramifications that the trust would go away. We're so far away from that. It's strictly trust administration, as far as I can read the ordinance changeover. So <coughs> the idea that somehow the trust would be dissolved or decision making of this body could take it away, uh, even up to the point that you just made about the termination of the trust, it's all in our code. So 3870, without being a lecture, 3870030 is, uh, is law. And that's how we function. That's our world. So the legal agreement, the legal understanding is certainly a basis for that. But I, I, I believe that the law is, is what we're talking about changing here. And so just to perhaps a little education on what's in front of us. We've never seen that. Perhaps it's available to us, but I'm sure that turned into 3870 uh, 30. Mr. Chair, um, good, sir. Mr. Stark, it's not my intent to, uh, to suggest uh, any course of action that you're taking. I'm, I'm only setting uh, or describing the, the um, Terms of the of the trust instrument. Yeah. These are things that you could do, if you, or if you were faced with having to do a termination, at, uh, that the, then there's the trust instrument does have um, some uh, some provisions in it uh, on that in that respect. Certainly, without the debate, it's it's we would likely do what we're doing now. I would I would recommend as a legislative solution because we're legislators. That would be to change to change the three eight seven. 030, and that's what's being proposed. If, if there was an outside agreement, that would be an executive branch, most likely with the recommendation on law change. But thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Honeman, sir. Well, and Mr. That, Steele. To that point, and that's, this is one of the things I think you're getting to, and maybe I need to clarify. You're not suggesting that we're eliminating the entire trust in its entity. But if I think what I'm hearing you're saying is the trust instrument says that if we're going to dissolve the trust board, and allow the retirement board, the police and fire retirement system board, to thereby supervise that that is a, a drastic change or dra dramatic change of how we're doing business within the benefit. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I don't believe I was, I was uh, intimating that. Is, uh, either a, uh, I was just pointing out that there is a provision for termination of the trust in the trust instrument. I'm not suggesting that that, that, that would uh, uh, necessarily be something that you that you would do in context of considering this particular ordinance. Okay, so this, in this particular ordinance, are you saying that this is viewed as a termination of the existing trust no, board? that is not what I'm intended to do. Okay. Well, I, I, guess, I, I guess what I wanted to double check and verify is, and, and I'm not necessarily to you, Mr. Breck, because it sounds like you're just doing the, uh, making us aware of this trust instrument. Mr. Wheeler, this, this position I know your historical document talks about the change in 2001, and I heard you say for whatever reason. But is there some, I suppose we have to get what's on record of why the changes were made in 2001 from the initial to your interim financing and the dollar amounts that were placed in 1996. I mean, it isn't just for whatever reason. Somebody made an agreement in 2001. It certainly wasn't you. It wasn't this body. No, it was this body. It was my ordinance. Well, yeah, but I'm the one I'm saying. So it wasn't this present body. Yes, sir. Uh, so yes, sir. I, I can also tell you that uh, we issued an opinion about that time frame recommending against the changes, but, but nevertheless, those changes went forward. Okay. So but we can get you that material. Get to you later. I, I appreciate that. And then, last, I just want to point it out point out to my colleagues, and this is something that we'll get you, later. you know, we're kind of arguing over a range 15 non rep who administers a 20 year old plan that. Even Mr. Raskin says 
expenditures seem to be legitimate. The question is, is how this plan is administered. And I don't think this gets the answer to that. I, I really don't. I think what we need to do is, is step back and not go down the road we did a couple of years ago, working in a vacuum without having the trust board. And that would be my question. And I'm Mr. Brecht or Mr. Brett, I see a couple of members of the trust board. Has the trust board ever been consulted on how to fix fix this information through the administration? I'm not talking about from the assembly because I know Ms. Gray Jackson's uh, audit committee did in the past, but has the trust board on any ordinance changes or this ordinance, has the trust board ever been consulted with the audit findings or suggestions on how to fix it? My name is Greg Stewart. I'm on the medical trust board. And the answer to that is, with the exception of one time, I do not remember Mr. Raskins making any presentation to our trust board, especially 2012 and 2014 audits were specifically not brought to the board. We have never had an opportunity to provide a written response. Only the municipality has been shown that audit and offered an opportunity to respond. And even though we haven't been provided these audits officially, we've obtained them, and the board takes them very seriously, and we've taken steps to uh, correct any uh, problems that he's recommended to be corrected. And as a matter of fact, last year, we looked at the whole organizational structure uh, of the municipality, and our board has no home. We don't have a, a place anywhere in the municipality as far as anybody else calling up. The medical trust doesn't exist unless you go to the police website and there's a link there. But we're not on the work chart. In the police and fire board under the assembly along with several others, our board does not exist. And as a result of that, the employee who was originally started off in employee relations, who works for the board and, and takes care of all of our medical trust matter, has really been in a wrong home the whole time. And the trust analyzed that and wrote up a, a draft AO, which would correct this by simply moving the trust, or actually formalizing the trust under the assembly and moving the pay step uh, 15 employee over under that trust, all of these issues that have been brought up and recommended for consideration in the audits would go away. And we gave it to Amy Dombowski, an assembly member. Uh, she presented it to Mr. Wheeler, and then in December, we were all shocked to see the surprise AO 151. You, when you said that, I saw this question look on Dennis's face. Yes, I did last summer. <laughs> okay. Mr. Holman, I've got Mr. Steele, then Mr. Dombowski. Mr. Steele, sir? Yeah, I guess, um, I guess I need to make sure that I'm thinking in the right terms here. All we're talking about is, uh, is sharing uh, the, the one... Uh, professional administrator uh, between the two entities and I guess my question is does the administrator make recommendations to the board in terms of investment policy or or disbursement policy or is he basically uh, the whoever it is uh, just uh, um, just making sure that things keep working Mr. Wood, do you want to answer that question before I go to Mr. Mowski? Thank you. Um, Mr. Steele, the um, Goodbye, Mr. That we have Thanks for being here. does not mandate that the new board have this administrator. What the proposal is, if you look in the ordinance, is that we continue to provide funding. They can use the funding to administer the trust, whether it's through this position or a combined position or shared services or contracting out. That's entirely up to them. We've given them that flexibility versus funding a position. Now, what that position currently does would be a question best addressed to the current administrator or to one of the trust board members, because we don't supervise that position. Mr. Steele? So the board uh, could make a determination that this this person uh, track the trust investments and give them recommendations or something like that, but it would be at the direction of the board. Yes, and both boards have the ability to hire independent experts to Thank assist you. them in their various functions. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Ms. Dombowski, ma'am. Um, just to give the members a little bit of clarity, last summer I had attended one of the board meetings because I wanted to learn about what this board did, and I had heard uh, concern about the audit, and they wanted to address it. 
so um, they had been in contact with the administration multiple times saying, here's our solution, what do you think? It was given to me, and I was told by Mr. Baker that Dennis had a, a, an issue with it. So I tried to work through the administration to come up with some sort of negotiated solution. And I was told it would come, you know, they would deal with it like first week of October-ish. And then October came and went, we were very busy, it got put off, and the next thing I knew, the administration had a totally different thing. So, from my perspective, the board was completely kind of ignored, no, unfortunately, sure. whether it was intentional or not. Hey, Chair, I, I respectfully disagree with that terminology. Okay, well, sorry, I don't mean intentionally. So I mean, noted, Mr. Weider. thank you, sir. We had discussed that at length, and I gave you uh, my opinion as to what the concerns were. Sure. I did not ignore the proposal. Well, and, and what I was saying is, there was going to be some sort of, I thought what I was going to get out of it was some sort of, okay, here's their proposal. Is, is there any way you can make it work and address your issues and kind of make a, a marriage of them? And, you know, things got busy, whether it was intentional or not, then a different proposal came out. That's fine. So I went back and I listened and, I, you know, I think it would be helpful to put it into context because this isn't just a trust. This municipality was sued. So there was a settlement. The trust was established. These are legal documents. What, regardless of what code says, we can change code, but if we're not careful, because there's a trust involved and a previous lawsuit, the municipality could be opening itself up for a liability and not just you know $8,000 of a staff member. We could be talking about a, another lawsuit. So I think in just the effort of cooperation, it would be helpful to have a member of the board just come up for five minutes and give a spiel. Sure. We'll give them five minutes. We have half an hour left. That's Is really that true, Mr. Wheeler? Are we open it. for a lawsuit through modifying current mm -hmm. code? Uh, through the chair, Mr. Starr, I worked very hard to avoid that issue. To Mr. Breck's comment, for example, regarding IRS code, I took my proposal to our outside counsel on IRS matters. She helped me craft this bill mm -hmm. to make sure that we were not implicating IRS concerns. So I have tried very hard to set this up so that would not be an issue. Again, I'm not trying in any way to diminish benefits or affect benefits. In fact, I've included that very language in this ordinance on the back of the ordinance section 6. I specifically state that this is not for the purpose of altering the substantive benefits or obligations of the programs. So, um, again, we will we will certainly be happy to work with people on it to be the ordinance to make that. The retirement board is interested in making sure that the retirement side is not responsible for shortcomings in the trust side. Yeah. Likewise, the trust would not want to be responsible for shortcomings in the retirement side. No problem. We can create language to do that. I can't. Sir, sit down. So, come here. Do come here. Without come on. Sit down here. Mr. Trainee, just for Whichever. can I expand this just a little bit? So basically, if we if we modified 387, 030, or any of 387, if we modified that, then potentially the executive branch would go back and, and rework the negotiated agreement that, uh, that the previous lawyer has, has put in front of us? Is that how you would mechanically uh, avoid that? First of all, the, the ordinance in terms of expanding the duties of the function yes. are done by the assembly. The assembly can make changes to it. I understand. Okay, that's, that's not a problem. But that's not what we're doing with 387, though, are we? Yeah, you're making changes to 387. Yeah, but not the, not not the, the trust document that he's seeing. I understand. The trust document is controlled by the trust board, right? <coughs> so the question is whether the board formulation that I'm proposing needs to be changed in the trust mm -hmm. document to reflect the same. I understand. Because yeah, what Mr. Bosky said was that if I change the 387, not that we would risk the previous agreed upon agreement by, by that. But in, in theory, then, because it says we have the power to modify that agreement, essentially by 387, we would, we would say, hey, here's the new policy of the assembly. Go in and do something. Right. If you think about what Mr. Breck said earlier, um, regarding termination, the code provides the assembly can terminate the trust program. Yeah. It can do that. It has the well, code, yeah, code tells us how, how to do that. How do you implement that? Can I speak when I get a minute? Well, well code, code, says, a second, Mike. code says how to do that. I certainly don't want to be accused of opening the, the municipality right. up to a lawsuit if, in right. fact, we're making a code change. Right. Uh, I, I have no intention to avoid that agreement. Uh, it okay. Mr. Starr, I've got a That's all I need. individual raising her hand. Yes, ma'am. Can you have Mr. Wheeler repeat that since the the phone was cutting in? I think that we're not going to... Wheeler, could you repeat what you just said, Dennis? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> word, word for word. The last two minutes. Oh, oh, only the last two minutes? Last two minutes, Dennis. Oh, my gosh. All right. 
right. It was witty. Well, in response to the, the question from Mr. Starr, uh, we have done everything we can to craft this so that we're not exposed to litigation. And we know, I knew when I wrote this, we'd have to make some tweaks because a lot of what has been talked about is how do you combine the board functions, right? That's more a conversation between the two systems than it is for the municipality. We're not going to, we're not in any way trying to dictate uh, how they transition. Right, or what they need to do to modify their documents. All we're saying is here's the board structure and try to give them adequate time to make it happen. I put in 90 days, 90 days is probably way too short. The boards can advise us as to what kind of time frame they need to make it happen. Thank you, Mr. Reader. Sir, you've got five minutes. You want to identify yourself for the it's machine? Again. My name is Greg Stewart. I'm a retired police officer. I'm on the Police and Fire Retiree Medical Trust Board. And I'm also uh, here today to talk about the Trust agreement. Uh, in AM 1298-94, meeting date of December 28, 1994, it states in paragraph two: the municipality has agreed to pay the medical or pay the administrative expenses necessary to set up the infrastructure to administer the program. This includes the funding, the funding, the salary and benefits up to one technical level employee, which was later amended to. Uh, uh, Position 15. The trust is intended to be operated by the Board of Trustees, not the municipality. The office space necessary to house this employee will be provided by the municipality. That's in the original agreement. The municipality has agreed to pay the salary, whether it's $108,000, $200,000, or anything above $108,000, nothing less. Um, since I've been in the program, since I retired, I've had privilege of dealing with several of the people that are ministering the plan and I've had to move from one office to another to try and get my uh, refund documentation or reimbursement uh, documentation administered because employee relations no matter what mayoral administration uh, they don't know who this employee is and they they can't seem to figure out what they to do and who they work for and so they've been moved from place to place. One employee would say, well, you only do part-time work, so here's a stack of employee relations work to do in your other time. And the board had to intervene and correct that and stop that. Uh, the position's been moved from City Hall to uh, Fire Training Center to Public Safety, uh, I mean, uh, Public Works Office to uh, back down here to City Hall. And the employee position has always been an issue and since taking on uh, the responsibilities of the medical trust as a board member, this issue keeps coming up again and again and again, uh, as referred to in the audit. Even though the audit finds the administration of the trust that there is no problems, uh, the position of the employee has become the subject of controversy. Yeah. So that is why the board last year uh, looked at it overall and came up with a resolution to basically formalize the trust under the assembly under boards and trust and then have that position move from employee relations over to the trust to be administered in the same manner as the police and fire retirement system the police and fire retirement system employees are also uh, pay step 15 uh, they didn't take furlough there was no issue there the uh, position was looked at by the um, medical trust board and we only have one egg and one basket and it would diminish uh, employee or, uh, benefits to retirees so we do not allow the furlough to go through for that particular individual uh, it was also approved through the municipality time card system uh, and our employees have been following the municipal rules so I, I, I just think that the simplest solution is the one that's being presented by the board which has been overshadowed overshadowed by this other uh, major contention but there are different things that were agreed to during the litigation process the unfunded liability of the municipality was a catalyst. The medical trust was created. The police and fire retirement board was in existence then and it was deliberately intentionally set aside as a separate function from the police and fire retirement board. It is, it is like separation of church and state. You, you don't mix them together. And yes, it may be a common thing in other places, but here it was established separately as two separate trusts. The medical, uh, issues and uh, legislation have increased or it's just significant and uh, any, anything dealing with uh, internal revenue service rules for uh, medical or medical uh, laws is incredibly increased and even subject matter experts um, have trouble giving you an answer for some of those topics. So I hope that answers some of the questions. Thank you, Mr. Reader. Thank you. 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 Th
Mr. Starr for Senator Honeman. One of the concepts that's in um, this ordinance in front of us is to just give a, a flat amount, whether we're dealing with combining the, the boards or not, that's separate. But the, the idea that there's sort of a flat amount yearly budgeted just says, here's your $100,000 in this case, and, and dedicated to the board of directors to spend and how they will. Is that an effective solution for some of the discussion that you, you highlighted a problem too, that bounce them around, they don't go in the administration the next. If it was always a board trustee's function to watch over that person, contracted company or whoever, with $100,000 to do it, is that a solution that would work here as well? The, the trust does not desire to hire an independent person to administer the trust. The, the, the trust does or does not? It does not. They want to maintain a municipal employee very similar to those employees working for the police and fire, uh, fire retirement board. And there is currently already an employee. He's very well versed on the trust and does an excellent job. And it would just be a matter of laterally moving it over to the trust board position. As far as taking and eliminating the employee position completely and accept the money and then going out and hiring somebody, there's a, there, there would be a transitional phase where there'd be nobody to take care of the retirees and the benefits. And we would be right back in the same place where the municipality would have to contribute money to the trust in order to fund that position. And uh, the board does not feel that that is beneficial to the members or to the uh, plan and with diminish benefits. What's the canary in the coal mine? You know, Mr. Bretz does a good job here. So you have an example where, hey, there's no problem not to change it. What's the canary in the coal mine if that person doesn't do their job appropriately, um, you know, inferring that there may be uh, s something wrong either uh, some other aspect who's going to pick up on that first because right now I feel liability based on that employee performance if they mishandle the trust dollars or mishandle that then it's like hey you know especially if you move it under the assembly's purview well, I don't think we're equipped to supervise an employee per se where the board certainly is but you wait almost two years to see the or a year and a half to see the results of an audit what's the canary in the coal mine if in fact you have a poor performance the, the Police and Fire Retirement Board is set up with a director, and there are two uh, non-rep positions under that. And that, that retirement board ministers those employees and municipalities to digest you know, does that. Say that board. again, ministers the employees? Yes. The so you're saying that employee reports directly to the board absent of anything other than yes. a paycheck from the meeting? And, and our trust has never been formalized. When they created this, they did not formalize a place for the trust to exist. We mm -hmm. were just kind of floating out there aimlessly in the air. And by our revision, the AO revision, we've asked that it be actually formalized in place like the Police and Fire Retirement Board uh, with the employee under that supervision of the trust. If the employee does not act accordingly, then the trust would take appropriate actions the same manner as the retirement board would to deal with any employee problems. I, I guess I, not to date, but the 387030 speaks to it and it says a retiring medical funding program trust will be established to administer the police and fire retirement medical program. So <coughs> you keep saying that there's been no formalization of the trust. What, what, what in the organizational <coughs> trust, I'm sorry, but in the organizational oh, trust, trust. Yeah. Yeah. The, the trust does not exist. Yeah, I get that. Well, the you executive have branch ordinance. changes based on assembly approval. Every administration is going to be different. You might move development services under the manager. You might move it under ACDA later on. I, I, so I, I don't, not to debate whether that's an effective solution. Now, my initial question was, what's wrong with just, you already supervise the employee, as you said. Why not just give you the money to do it? If you choose an employee or you choose a contractor, and again, with especially that, you know, five years from now, if there's only 250 people in the trust, when does the workload not justify a full-time person? And, and that's so it's, I don't find the conversation in the money allocation as problematic for me as I do the elimination of one board or another. So thanks for being here on that opinion. That's all, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Honeman, sir. Well, and I, and I guess I want to... Mr. Steele brought up a question, and I'm not sure he got it completely answered accurately because Mr. Wheeler on the follow-up said the new board. New board. The language is important because we already have an existing board. So with what Mr. Brecht has said, if we're going to create a new board by ordinance, we're dissolving the old board. We're dissolving what's in the trust agreement. 
which means we're terminating, which means we have to do what is in the trust agreement, uh, the trust, trust document. Wow. And, I, and, I, and, and so my concern is, why are we going with a hatchet when we could use a scalpel and make some adjustments to the existing code and address the concerns? And I think Mr. Stewart was saying, if you look on the back of the org chart on the back of this particular ordinance that was presented by the administration, there are, uh, on the far right, these departments are board managed, ACDA, Community Development Authority, Police and Fire Retirement System. Add, simply add a box down below, Police and Fire Retirement Medical Program, and then you'd have clarity. I mean, it's simple, seems simpler to me than, second, uh, than to try to dissolve an entirely board, a board that's working, by even Mr. Raskin's uh, account. Dennis, and then I'm going to Mr. Bowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Holman, to that point, uh, putting them somewhere else in the org chart doesn't change the fundamental dynamic as to whether they apply the <coughs> personnel rules, the ethics rules, the purchasing code, and so on, whether they are or not a useful employee for all purposes. That's the issue. So just putting it out there, ACDA has very specific provisions about whether they comply with those code provisions. Retirement system has the same. For example, they comply with Title Seven and so on. So just the org change chart itself doesn't do enough, and that was one of my issues, I believe, with the proposal that I saw in October. Um, changing the org chart doesn't resolve the fundamental issue as to the status. And my concern is, from a liability perspective, is that unless you resolve that, every lawsuit that could ever happen involving that position will always name the municipality, will always be tagged with a negligent supervision claim, possibly a negligent training claim, because we don't exercise proper oversight functions like we do with all those employees. Retirement board has three municipal representatives on the board. They're voting members. We don't have that with the trust. We have ex officio members that have the right to vote. So that's, that's an example of how there are substantial and significant differences between this gray area over here and a much more certain area here as we have with other boards that we manage. Anything else for Tony? Nope. Mr. Dabowski, ma'am. Um, uh, I, I think I'll let Mr. Stewart finish and then I'll, I'll have a comment. Mr. Stewart? Yes, as far as the following the employee rules, the position that uh, is currently held by Mr. Bretz does follow the employee rules and if moved underneath the trust formalized underneath the org chart, he would have the same requirements to follow the municipal rules as the police and fire retirees. I, I don't really see any difference there. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the board has not been approached with any of these changes to the current AO 151, and there is a provision in the code currently under 387 that requires that any changes to that 3.87 must be presented to and approved by the board. That has not been done in this case, and therefore this ordinance is invalid and would be subject to litigation. Okay. We kicked it back okay. to the board review. Assembly. Let me get Mr. Bowles. That goes to my. You answered two of them because my first question was going to be: um, I, I think I'm with you on the employee rules. I just don't think that they follow the employee rules. Okay. Um, but the second question was going to be: um, if you have a situation where an employee is terminated. My second question was, I knew I read somewhere, I don't know if it was a settlement, the trust agreement, what it was, <coughs> but I read somewhere that changes like this would require uh, agreement with the board. And, and to me, I couldn't find where I read it. Um, but that was my understanding. Is that the board's understanding? Yes. And so that's the issue that I had was, I, I felt like because the board wasn't consulted or agreed with this, this potentially could open us up to litigation and that's the position of the board, is that correct? Yes, that's our position. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wheeler, has this gone to the board? Mr. Chairman, we made a very simple proposal in 2011 to this board. When we met with the board after the audits with Mr. Raskins and Mr. Sarah and Ms. Elder Great Jackson, we made the same pitch over and over again. We need to change the structure. We want the person either in or out. And um, again, the board was opposed to those concepts. And I don't know that we ever got a formal proposal to them until the one that we talked about, which was a different approach and didn't resolve the fundamental question. So we have made what I will call overtures to the board about making these changes. This time I decided to go ahead and write the ordinance, and get it in the system so that we can get the conversation going with a document people can actually look at and debate. So you, Mr. Chairman, this not is Mike Caddy. Yes, Mike. But if Dennis is done, I can't hear that well, so I don't mean okay. to interrupt. I apologize. I just I want to ask Dennis one question, Mike. So 2014-151 has never been sent 
to the board for their opinion or the review of it, sir? Mr. Weeder? I don't know how they got the version that they have. So we didn't send it to them. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Starr? We've, as a body, if I can re relate, because I'm the audit chair who's been wiggling on whether or not to discuss the matter in committee based on Mr. Wheeler's report. So I thought today was the result of, of getting this in front of them. I mean, this is sort of what my interpretation was as the body's action previously was that I could bring it into committee and address the board, but I had reservations on doing that. So the idea I felt was today was to do that. So the accusation perhaps that we didn't do it is a negligence. I take some responsibility for that. But once we had an active item in front of us, this was, I believe, the, the action to where we hear from the board. When does your board meet again? Sir, I'm not sure that we have a date. So you already, you already, you already have, well, actually, we have a special meeting set for uh, tomorrow to deal with this issue. But as far as okay. meeting, I don't believe we have. So this issue is coming for your board tomorrow. Uh, <coughs> Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, Saturday. Saturday. Mr. Cheney, their board has already their board has already voted in support of the proposed AO. AO that's in front of us. Uh, AO, it's unnumbered. It's X, AO 2014 XX. It's this one. Mm -hmm. Right. But they haven't taken action on the 151. Uh, they said no, they don't. Let me ask. Did they, have they taken action on 151 to approve it or turn it down? I know you've got your other version. It is the general consensus of the board to reject the current proposal. Okay. Thank you. We have a few minutes left. Any other comments or questions from assembly members? This is Mike Getty. Yes, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone, uh, for the uh, comments and so on. Um, it, it's the board's position that uh, the board has to be consulted and approve any changes to the trust uh, agreement and the trust uh, requirements. And that's notwithstanding the municipal ordinance. And if you look to the trust agreement, it contains a provision um, that addresses the powers of the board that was approved by the municipality. So um, I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bowski, ma'am. Anything else? No. Ms. Gray Jackson, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just um, briefly, I'm um, sitting there listening to all of this and, and recognizing that this isn't the first time, as everybody knows, that internal audit brought forward an audit um, with this issue. And, um, you know, I, I said it before at our assembly meeting, and I'll say it again when I was chair of the audit committee, I pulled together um, an a, a ad hoc committee, if you will, consistent of folks in the, in the administration, myself, um, folks from the Police and Fire Retirement Board, to finally review and address um, this issue, except, you know, the administration was too busy on other issues, and so we never met, okay? Um, and it troubles me that that didn't happen. And what also troubles me is, M Mr. Real is correct, we did have another meeting, but what also troubles me is that all of a sudden this ordinance was um, introduced. And it kind of reminds me to some extent of AO 37. Okay? It was introduced. And if we had dealt with the situation when, when we had the opportunity, bringing all the parties to the table, we wouldn't be where we're at today. So with that said, my recommendation is that we take a serious look at this proposed substitute, um, not not take any action on 151, but take a serious look at this proposed We substitute. don't take action during work sessions. No, 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 I mean at, at, at our next meeting, but that's my recommendation. Mr. Thank Steele you, and then Mr. Mr. Bowski, we're out of here. Yeah, mine's, mine's, it seems to me that we're not that far apart, or the, the sides are not that far apart that uh, the board does want the individual work, uh, the uh, trust does want the individual working for them to uh, uh, to be a municipal employee and uh, and to have a place in an org chart and uh, thank you mr. star if, if that's the case Happy flying the the problem seems to me is the suspicion that when we do that, then the municipality will take control and do something strange or against the board. The board won't have that autonomy. Uh, so, so it, it seems to me that uh, that you really want the same thing in terms of the employee to be, uh, or the individual working with the, with the trust to be a uh, uh, 
to be a municipal employee and have a place in the org chart like the other uh, the other systems. So it seems to me you got a nexus of an agreement, and I think uh, I think looking at this to see what we've got is fine. But it, uh, it seems to me folks sitting down and talking about it to give everybody the security they need is what's necessary. Mr. Mouse, you got three minutes, and this meeting's over with. Thank me. you, Mr. Chair. So I just I'll give these to the clerk. Um, so she has them, but the board just delivered me uh, letters from a number of their members. You can see this back here, all rejecting the administration's version. Um, with that said, I have made it very clear to the board that I find their solution to be a reasonable solution, and I would support it. Um, at this point, I haven't had any other member that's been willing to co-sponsor that piece, but if anybody's interested, um, I'm going to ask Ms. Tucker to go ahead and get this in, and, you know, review it first, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enter it into the system. Good. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, if anybody wants to come, I'd like to be co-sponsored. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, I would too. And lastly, I just want people on the board to know that not many members of our colleagues here is that this is, board has been around since for about 20 years now, and I would hardly think that any liabilities or risk to exposure to this municipality is any greater today than it was all around the years. 20 years. And, uh, and, uh, 20 years. <laughs> so for 20 years we've had the same concern of possible exposure and I don't think it's any less diminished or any more greater than it has been even all that time. Previously that what it was was the active employees who retired, their medical retirement was the same as the active employees. Whatever was negotiated they kept in retirement. This trust, this settlement, these dollar amounts is a significant savings to this community and this administration to our municipality. Uh, it has incrementally been uh, reimbursed, and it, uh, there is no medical retirement for these uh, for these guys otherwise. So, anyway, those are my comments. I'd, I'd like you to seriously consider what we've been proposed today. Thank you. Thanks for being here. This meeting's adjourned.